Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Till midnight. There's Albert Reynoso. As Hello, I Alex. live and I goddamn fucking breathe. That's right. And, and it's year after you, and we can't stop you. I don't know how. I don't we know. try. We try to stop you, but we can't. But you told me before we went on here that you've yeah. been drinking today. Yes. Occasionally I go out with a couple of people from the uh, neighborhood, as it were, and uh, we just sit around at the local, um, I guess they make beer. It's a, it's a beer brewery. Uh, well, it's we, a brewery, they make the beer. Yes, yes, it's a brewery. And uh, we sit sit around and just, you know, bullshit for two hours. That's, That's great. It. That's wonderful. Yeah. 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 I don't so, like this. Yes. So you get what drunk. the alcohol? You, you get drunk in the middle of the day. Well, for me... The whole day is the middle of the day. That's what you can do. Life is the middle of the day. That's what you can do if you're unemployed. And I am. (laughs) Massively unemployed. I'm unemployed, too. We've been unemployed for what? Uh, Just about. uh, Well, you worked a little bit afterwards. Well, I wouldn't call call it work. But we were, I think it's been about, hasn't it, if this, maybe this month coming up, it's been 10 years? About 10 years, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. I haven't had a job in 10 years. I was so used to working, you know? Yeah, so was I. But really, I don't I don't mind not. And in fact, now I don't want to do it well, because I, of I, the, I do what mind. I hear about corporations now. Well, Who the hell wants well, to be part of it? Well, that's that's the problem of corporations. But what yeah. I'm saying is, is that uh, do you miss the work itself? Oh, come on. You know, walking in at uh, uh, five in the morning yeah. and nobody's there. And then the first face I see in the day is is Alex Bennett's grumpy face. Who doesn't miss that? Yeah, nothing. I do. <laughs> you also miss painful rectal itch as well, right? Now you know I I I uh, I sent you a link yesterday to uh, to uh, to uh, something, uh, an interview, a radio interview yeah. regarding a guy that I worked with, uh, and I've worked with a number of people. Uh, all big what he's people. saying, I, folks, I, is I, he was basically unemployable and had to move from job to job. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm saying that 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 I, I am so fortunate to to have worked with s- s- maybe a handful of the most important people in modern radio. And um, for me to end my radio thing, and I loved radio. You you know that. I, mm-hmm. I love the... Oh, you uh, absolutely loved it. I love the business. I love the way, you know, the way it... it we love the form of communication. People. The whole the whole thing is intriguing, yeah. you know, because you're dealing with people you never get to mm-hmm. see, and they're really affected by what you're saying. It's a very cool thing. But in in all in all the time I've had I've had a really fortunate experience to work with just the greatest people in the business, not always the nicest people in the business, but but certainly the greatest people in the business I've worked with, and to end it for ten years, almost ten years with you, is a great thing, but even better. And I thought about this yesterday. Even better than than having worked with you for ten years or ended it for ten years, is that I. Against all odds, became your friend and enjoy being your friend. How crazy is that? That's crazy. That's that, that that is crazy. <laughs> That's a great life. Yeah, yeah. It shows you have no life at all. Not at all. <laughs> Not, Not at, at all. all. Show, show, it shows that I'm I'm very uh, picky, and oh, and okay. I'm choosy, and, and I like uh, I like good variety, and I like spice, because uh, otherwise I'd have you know kicked well, you to the. That cur- was very very nice of you to say, by the way. And the well, other day- I, I don't say, I don't say it for any other reason but but to tell you mm-hmm. because because you know often I think about my parents aren't here and I wish I could have said something to them or asked my mother for a recipe or something and and I've I've thought about doing this more uh, with people that are still here than saying oh I wish I have had and that's why I tell you 
this because it's important for me to let you know while you're still here mm -hmm. that yes, that well, you better you better hurry up because I might not be here much longer. That, that's that's why I did it at this one and yeah. not, you know not held it off for another one or two. So I have a no, I, I, I have a touch of the cancer. Everybody has a touch of the cancer. Uh, Big no, I have, I have I have leukemia. Oh, you got a you got a good one? Yeah, I got well, I got chronic. Lymphos Wait a minute! You're, you're, uh, this whole nice thing that I'm uh, saying leukemia. is being interrupted by cancer. Yeah, it's called CLL. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's not uh, it won't kill me. So do you want to start the show over again, and then uh, we'll start with <laughs> the dire news, the, the breaking news? Anyway, breaking anyway, news. Forget about that part of it. Just it's nice you said it to me before the CLL got me. Okay. I don't care what gets you. I don't care uh, how you go. I just care that you stick around as long, as long, as long, as long. I, as I plan to be a burden to everybody. So, anyway. I know you'll be, you will be walking with blood coming out of every orifice, and you'll still be complaining about shit. Yeah. About can't sleep. <laughs> anyway, yeah. the uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So the other day on the, the Monday show, I get a call as one of the people on the show from Ed Cramp. Now, you don't know I... Don't think you know from Ed Cramp, or maybe you do. I know, I know Ed, sure, yeah. I don't know, I don't know, I know him for your, from your group on Mondays, yes. No, no, and no, you don't know Ed Cramp then. No? Ed Cramp was the, my general manager in San Francisco. He I know holds, the name from somewhere. He holds the distinction of having fired me twice. Yes, I. that's where I know the name from. Yeah, and he called, and he said, of all the things in his career... The highlight was his relationship and working with me. And I went, wow. You know, he's been around a while. And to say that really made me feel special, you know, really made, really made me feel good about my life, you know. How long has Ed had Alzheimer's? Uh, quite a long time. He has the same amnesia Americans have about Trump. <laughs> you uh, know, my favorite thing was working with you, Alex. No. He really. Uh, I believe it. I believe it. You're not. You're not the easiest person to to work with or deal with in many cases. However, you are an interesting person to work with and deal with. That I will say. Yeah. There's never a dull moment. Well, he also said he I, he felt I was the most talented person he had ever worked with. I went. That's very subjective. That's it's very, very subjective. subjective. Yeah. yeah. But you know. And uh, he uh, he said uh, the biggest mistake he ever made in his career was firing me the first time. Right, because he had to pay you more the second yeah. time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that that was my. But you were you were saying about this interview that you sent me, which was, you know, which was Jim Kerr and uh, Howard Stern. Right. As a back as a little backstory, Jim. I worked with Jim for many years yeah. on several different radio stations in New York, and Jim is now celebrating uh, at Q104.3 in New York uh, his 50th year, not in radio, in New York radio. That's, that. I mean, that's a lot of years anywhere, but to be Did 50 you, years... Do you know uh, I was there when you got... I know his, you were there. When he got I his first job in New York. Yes, I know you were there. I remember when and he that, took and over that's, mornings. And that's, that's what made it a good interview for me because I was thinking I was thinking about all, you know, this crazy ride that I've had just trying to get into radio and working with my heroes and, 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 then, and then being able to boss them around. How cool a life is that, you know? Yeah, right. and, then, and then ending off with you. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. It just does not get better than that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I you know. Uh, and I feel that in my career, uh, I would say you were the best producer I ever had. Well, how could you not? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I should have said you were the worst, and then we would have, you know. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I do. And I, I had a couple. Of, I had a couple of good producers. I'm sure but, you did. But you were extraordinary. You were the the a commensurate uh, um, uh, a professional. See, I don't, I don't, people have told me that before, but I don't understand what that means because it, it, at times I've been told it's because you do follow through, it's because you, you get all the details, but that's what you should do, shouldn't you in life? Shouldn't you do those things? What makes it professional? Well, I mean, you, you, you took the job seriously, you know, 
I never had anybody yeah, that, a, yes, th that thorough. Yes, you know why? Because after I after I made you know twenty five thousand dollars a year or whatever it is as a as a kid as a producer maybe less than that, you know and and then several years later I was making six figures. You better take it seriously. You better be professional. You better be good about it. This is not a joke. This is not hanging out with guys right. and having a good time. This is a job. And if you can make it easier for the for the the talent that you work with and if you can make them shine regardless of what you look like or the shit you go through that's the job and that's why you're getting six figures a year and not twenty five thousand dollars a year still i mean that that it's a yeah. fucking job make the best out of it yeah that's that, what, that's that, what i that's probably and, why and by the way and you got me at the end of all the other guys you know, who, who, who I had to who learn different things from. So I was ready to, 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 to face anything when I got to you. I'm like, yeah, what do you need? Your prep sheet? I'll give you some prep in the morning. I'll give you this. I, you want some production? I'll do some production. You want some wacky voices? I'll do that. Who cares? What, you know, whatever you need. Well, you, you know, know what's I'll, interesting? I'll, I'll have it, to have it. What's interesting, and I have to go back and remember, you know, when we first uh, met, uh, it was because the program director said, I think I got a good producer for you. But, you, you know, I had to approve it. Uh, right. Because obviously you're somebody that I'm going to see every morning, and every morning I'm going to have to deal with. And I was the kind, you know, like when Lori Thompson in in San Francisco, when I went to the station she was on, they said, you know, we have a newswoman in the morning, and uh, if you don't want her, why we can get somebody else. And I, I, my first feeling was I don't want to put anybody out of work, right? So well, when they came oh, to me oh. with you. My thought was, well, who am I to put this guy out of work? Let, let's give him a shot, you know. I how long was it? We did. But I did, I started with you. I wasn't working there already. They weren't going to fire me. I started with you. In but, fact, no. But they said to me, we have a we have a producer for you, somebody who's available. Here's what he. This was before I ever went on the air there. Right. Okay. And that was me. They were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So they, so they, they knew the timing was right. I said, I was the guy, you were guy sounds okay to me. I said, you right. know, and if he yeah. isn't okay, I'll make him okay. Yeah. You know, my feeling was, is that if I don't like the newswoman or I don't like the producer, uh, I can always change them. I can always right. bend, bend them to my, to my way and to the way I do things. And I do things differently than a lot of other people do. As you well know, everybody does. You know, we um, all do. My, uh, I don't do a lot of prep for a show. That's what Lynn Samuels kept kept saying. Well, the reason I didn't do prep is that the show didn't seem to feel off the cuff unless I, if I did, you know, I wanted right. it to yeah, feel yeah. that it was it was kind of um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for that it Organic. was it was uh, uh, what's the word. Uh, See, that's I'm getting that way now, uh, but I I like to have the feeling that a show is uh, uh, organic. That's the term I'm using. You know, that's the word I just said. Oh, did you just say organic? I was trying to think yes. of the word, and yes, I didn't I hear did. you say organic. So, who stoned me or you? I I, I think uh, you're. Ma I'm getting a contact high. Here. Okay, contact high. But anyway, so. Um, uh, and, and so you became my producer. And I don't think we really liked each other for a while. You know, we... No, there's no question about it. Yeah. There's no question about it. Yeah. I, you were a little too cranky for me, and I was a little too what for you. What would you say? It was... uh, I don't really know. I don't really know what it is now. I'm sure I could have... I could have described it perfectly when it was happening but i don't i i do know there was a there was a um a very a tough angst between us there was a some 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 kind of energy that was between i think what it was we were trying to get used to each other but we didn't know what it was we had to get used to i don't know what it was it, it was a, it was a, an unusual and unique experience for yeah. me but so was serious i mean that whole thing was was a strange situation yeah but I don't know how long it took, but eventually we became almost, you know, um, um, a singular body, as it were. Yeah, you yeah. know, singular mind. You knew everything that I was going to do. I knew everything you were going to do, and we didn't have to say it, you know. Mm -hmm. 
It's like a married couple, I guess. I don't know. Well, that's what that's what that's what a good show team but uh, becomes. How long did it take before we actually said, "I think I kind of like this guy"? Uh, pro- no more than a year, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, it but, was it was it was not a, an, an instant thing, certainly. Yeah. But I I, th- I think it probably I I don't know. This is speculation. I think it probably had to do with management saying they wanted something from us, and you know we we we, we didn't want to give it. Gave them uh, ideas and and then they poo pooed them and and then we became a team. We said these these guys, this is this is what we're doing, not that. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I, exactly. Well, I think there was a point at which maybe what it was we felt camaraderie because we were in a war against them. No, I was never in a war with. It wasn't with, a, we were never against in a war against them. No. Actually, they were they were okay until uh, until you know when the, the, everything was fine for us at uh, Sirius XM as long as Mel was there. The minute you Mel know left, more about that than I would. I don't, huh? I, I don't know when when everything wasn't fine. Well, no, when Mel was there, our jobs were pretty safe. Okay. You know, and the minute he left, it got a little tenuous. You know. We're talking about Mel Carmazan, who happened to be the head of uh, Sirius XM, and the guy who discovered Howard Stern, basically, or gave Howard Stern a career. Well, he knew talent. He knew talent. Yeah, I mean, if he, he if he didn't if, if he didn't foster Howard Stern, Howard Stern would have never been heard from after he was fired from WNBC or any other number of radio stations. Yeah. Yeah. So but, you know, but he knew talent. He nurtured a lot of people in this business. Yeah, and and, and, and that's his, that's one of his his strongest suits. Well, I told you, and people don't do that. He told you, I told you the story about the day that the weekend. There was a weekend there where we didn't know whether there was going to be a job on Monday. You know, the the, the stock had gone so low at Sirius XM, the Sirius actually. And we didn't know if we were going to survive, and he made a deal with somebody, put an influx of a lot of money into into Sirius XM and saved oh, it right, yes. over the weekend, okay? That Monday, I walk into the, uh, or Tuesday maybe, I walk into the, uh, the break room, and there's Mel, and I had never talked to Mel in the whole time I had been there. And um, I walked up to him and I said, uh, hi, Mel, uh, I'm Alex Bennett. And he immediately looks at me and goes, well, of course I know you're Alex Bennett. I'm a fan. And when mm-hmm. I, I never had a boss say to me, I'm a fan, you know? And that really meant something to me, you know, especially from this guy who I, I turned down a job with him because I was afraid of him. What about the guy who fired you twice in San Francisco? He wasn't a fan? I loved him. I don't know why. But he wasn't a fan? No, and then when Obviously I was at not, he, fired XM, you twice. he tried to hire me back again <laughs> at um, uh, uh, one of the stations he was at in San Francisco. K-Mail. No, no. Did you ever work KML? KMEL. In, in the, on the East Coast, we call it KML. No, it's a, it a camel is what we called it. it was, I, know, yeah. I know. Anyway, <laughs> where, where were we? Oh, yeah, so he wanted to hire me back. He wanted to hire me to do a morning show for him. And um, he said we're gonna, we could do it out of this restaurant so you could have a studio audience every morning, the same thing we used to do in San Francisco. And basically, it wasn't I like he, that, was, he was asking me. He kind of put it like this. He said, do you know anybody who might want to do a morning show here? And hmm. I thought about it for a quick second, and I said, well, if I come up with a name, I'll let you know. Because I didn't want to leave Sirius XM. I mean, I felt at least for the time being, it was the most secure job I had. How long was this that you were in there? Where? Sirius? At Sirius? I was, we were at Sirius for about nine and a half years, right? Oh, but when, when he asked you to go to go to, Oh, Oh, I would say maybe four years into Sirius. Oh, but so we had already done a remote broadcast from San Francisco by then. Yes, we? we had. Yeah. Yeah. So you were sneakily uh, going to visit him while we were doing the remote broadcast? No, I w- no, did it happen there? I don't know if it happened when we were in San Francisco. 
Yeah, I just went over to see him to say hello, you know, because I, yeah. I you know, wanted to check up on him. And uh, that's when that came up. And I, I just said I didn't, I didn't take him up on it. He gave it, ultimately gave it to Will Durst and, um, and um, uh, Willie Brown, the former mayor of San Francisco. And the show lasted about six months, and that was it. And, you know, why, am I, why do I suddenly want to go somewhere else and take a chance, you know, that um, um, my business manager is calling me. Let me just turn that off. He That's can, good. I, I send it over to mail. Um, so anyway, so I, I, you know, I, um, um, uh, I, I, I turned it down. But he, he was just a great guy. And was to it a good me. offer? I didn't ask, but he said we're willing to pay anything it takes to get the right person. And could you have bring your, brung, brung your own people with you? I would imagine I could have, yes. But and who, he, might you, who might you have brought as your well, team? Well, I would ask you, obviously. Me? But, you know, I mean, the reason I didn't take it is I didn't, and it didn't last long, is that, okay, I knew that I at least had a job at Sirius XM. I had been there a while, and it was going to continue. I didn't know that about this, okay? So let's say I said to him, I want $200,000 a year, and he said, you got a deal. And, you know, there's nothing like making $200,000 a year for six months. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. So, exactly. So, so it, I, 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 and it was a wise decision, you know? I think so, too, because when you're serious, you say to yourself, well, you know, as long as Lynn Samuels is safe, I'm safe. See, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I said. Yeah, that's that's what you have to say when you're there. As long, who was that other guy, the talk show host they had, uh, who was also on MSNBC? Schultz, Ed Schultz. Oh, Ed Schultz. Yeah, yeah. I said as long as Ed Schultz is still alive, I've got a job. <laughs> well, by the way, I see your cat in back. Yeah, she's asleep as usual. I that's what I was saying that to Marjorie the other day about cats. One thing is. Cats make a, a a a home feel cozy. Yeah, they uh, cats when they're sleeping look like they're really enjoying it. I know this one is. Oh yeah, yeah. We love life. Yeah, Marjorie wanted to get a cat, and I told her, you know, uh, number one, who's going to take care of it when we go away? Okay, if we go somewhere. Because because you do that so often. Well, we're going to do it a lot soon. As okay. soon as the, the money comes through, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and I and I said also I said at my is it, age is, an, is this money in escrow now? And the money was uh, it's in the, what do they call that? Uh, is there a bond uh, on no. it? When they put it, probate, probate. Oh, it's a probate. Okay. Yeah, but it's coming. It's, it's supposedly it's going to be taken care of in the next couple of weeks. But uh -huh. anyway, the point I'm making is, if we go on these trips, who's going to take care of the cat? You know. And secondly, I don't know, I, I love cats. I absolutely love a cat. I would love to have one. But the idea of this cat looking at me every day when I wake up and going, you know, if you die today, I'm going to be here tomorrow. And it's only a matter of time before you're gone and I'm still here. So that's why I don't want a cat. This woman behind me, where is she? This way, over there. Yeah, yeah. She uh, is, I think, 14 years old now. Wow. That's a... We got her when she was 12. So there's nothing to say that you can't get an adult cat. And she is maybe, my wife agrees, the best cat uh, emotionally and characteristically that, we, that we've ever dealt with. Really? Not that there was any so problems. How come, how come the any... cat was 12 years old and uh, did the... Did people give it away? Did the no? We went to a shelter. We walked into the Humane Society, by 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 the house here, and uh, we said, look, "Let's let's take a look for a cat." And there she was, sitting on one of the benches. And my wife started uh, interacting, and she's been the best uh, animal companion that anybody can have. Really? If you you know if you if you want to take a, a, a feline life into your home, then by all means do it. Get an adult one. They you need know, as much. Not, but that's not easy a bad to idea. But now, who takes care of it when we go away on vacations? Well, yes, yeah, so you got to have friends. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. To life. I mean, uh, <laughs> you want to come in and move in for a couple of weeks uh, if we go away, and 
No, because I'm going to be in that big villa with you in uh, in Italy. Oh, in Italy. Uh, we're going to try that. That's one of the things we're going to try, but that's not our initial thing. First thing we're going to do is probably get on a boat. Not one of these big ones. Listen, but, if but, you guys go away and you need someone to take care of the cat that you have, mm-hmm. and you were to tell my wife that, mm-hmm. you would have somebody there anytime you needed care for the cat. Because she'd say, wait a minute, I get to stay in this great place in the middle of Manhattan and, and have a great cat with me as well? That's it. You, anyway, you're taking care. we've Don't run worry. out of time here. Oh, well, too bad. But let's cat do, t- let's do it again, okay? Let's do it. Okay. Bye-bye. That's, uh, that's uh, Albert Reynoso. See his name right under his picture there. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, Welcome to our little gathering here uh, that we do each and every night. And it's a completely frustrating experience, but we'll we'll try and and do it again tonight. Uh, I say frustrating because lately we haven't been getting a lot of people calling. And, you know, I always threaten to do away with this, uh, this program. Not necessarily my Internet presence, but this program because uh, the, of the lack of interest. And I've seen a great lack of interest lately. And that does not make me feel good. And it doesn't make me feel that uh, what we are doing here every night or every three nights a week and one day a week, uh, four shows a week, uh, means anything to anybody. I do know that the the, the uh, daytime show, the one we do on Mondays, is doing very well. We get very good response to it, and the numbers of people who watch it and listen to it are quite high. And I don't know that maybe this show isn't on too late or any one of a number of things. I certainly don't want to put another show on at 4 o'clock and ruin the wonderful the feeling that we've got on that, uh, on that early show. Excuse me, I'm wiping my phone. My phone, my phone's been having problems. Okay, Why, I'll stop complaining about the fact that nobody's listening. Uh, wait a minute, let me, let me uh, change the way in which I do my uh, background here. See what we do is this is the one that Zoom gives you. They've gotten a lot better with it though, a lot better. But even though if I put this here like this, see how it disappears now. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but I, uh, if I say I have a green screen, this will flip for a second. Wait a minute. Well, I guess it didn't. I have a green screen, and there it is. What's been happening is uh, the, the green has been coming through. I, I don't know. Anyway, does this work now? See, it does work. Wow. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Anyway, so where was I? Oh, yeah. So I don't know. You know, I really don't know uh, what to do. Um, but we are going to be going away on some vacations later this year. So, uh, you know, during that time, you're going to have to live without me anyway. So why not live without me now? Anyway, let me see here. I've got to get everything all all going and ready and fine. And I guess we're ready to go. We can bring in some of the, the people that are here, of which there are three of them. And uh, I will uh, uh, bring them in here. It's Charlie Wallace, John Ewing. Uh, Alan is there. Uh, hello, Alan. How are you? Jo- John, turn on your picture. There we go. There's John. He's our, he's our, our uh, Phil Meyer lookalike. And right. It, and I don't think on the same side, but thanks for having me. No, you're not a Phil Meyer be-alike, thank God. You know, but, uh, <laughs> If we had Phil here, you'd see what we mean. It's a, it's a certain. He symptom. was here. They oh. were here together one time. Were they here together? Oh, okay. Yeah. What are you looking at there? Oh, I'm now just like. typing to Phil. Your 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 Phil Meyer lookalike is on. Oh oh okay. Uh, is there a revenue stream for that? <laughs> yeah, there there's uh, there's certain revenue for that. Yeah, we'll put you down as Phil Meyer's double. You know? Yeah. Thank you. So. No, that, that that wouldn't be a compliment. So, um, so Phil, what do you think of Donald Trump? <laughs> I think you got to ask Phil about that. Oh, right? I, I see. I want. I thought you'd play Phil and go. Yeah, I tried. But What's wrong with your phone now? Well, you know some what? 
Well, you were talking about your phone before oh, you Oh, the phone. It. I don't know. You know, I mean, now it's working, but I was trying to do some dictating, uh, like into IMDb to, like, say, Quentin Tarantino, right? Sure. And then get it to come up, and it wasn't working. Just wasn't working. Now, I'm beginning to believe it might have something to do with Apple or with the Internet or something. Or it could have to do with that site. No, what happens is... This goes out to the internet. Well, it was also not doing it on a few other things, too. Oh. This goes out to the internet and looks up the words you're asking for, and then it puts them in there. And if right. uh, somehow that isn't working correctly, then you won't get a signal. So that, that's what I think it might be. But, you know, okay. it, it drives you crazy because when something goes wrong on your phone or goes wrong on your computer, right, the first thing you do is blame yourself, which is ridiculous, of course. What would... Uh, what is your phone? An, an iPhone what? What what model? It, it's an iPhone 3. Oh, okay. Uh, well, <laughs> it's time for a new one. <laughs> time for a new one. <laughs> well, this is the iPhone 13, I think. And so I'm going to, as soon as we get our money, I'm going to, first thing we're doing is going down to get two new phones. But this time, I'm just going to pay for it outright. Not have to, you know, make the weekly, monthly payments. Um, yeah. If there's still an Apple around at that time, Oh, I uh, think uh, they, uh, they say Apple seems to be in trouble now with the Justice Department, and and okay. not wrongly so. Do you think, uh, Charlie? What are they in trouble for? Oh, it's, it's an trouble. antitrust thing that they uh, oh. they have made the existence of other phones difficult because there's no interoperability between the phones. Oh. And that's one of the good things. Yeah. Well, it's not one of the good things. I mean, they 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 could make you could should be able to have a Android phone, although who would want one of those? That's uh, right. But you could have an Android phone. And you should be able to do some of, you know, if you send a video to somebody on an Apple phone, it should look pretty good, but somehow it, there's a degradation in picture that takes place when well. you go from one to the other. You're nodding yes, uh to me, um, uh, John, do you have yeah. an iPhone or do you have another kind of phone? I have an iPhone 14, but I have a friend in New Mexico that has the Android, and there's never clear communication when we uh, see share videos and things of that nature. That's what that's what the Justice Department is complaining about that they've they've made the ecosystem that Apple has not work with the ecosystem that Google has with like Android or whatever, but. What the Justice Department isn't saying is, does Android, does Google do exactly the same thing towards Apple? Mm -hmm. You know, and the trouble is that what we've got to do is maybe start arguing that there should be a uh, interoperability between all phones. You know, right. there should be a standard that it goes between them, that I can call you using FaceTime and it picks up on whatever Android's version of that is. I and think we, FaceTime is now downloadable by Android. Yeah, Apple but but you've got but you've got to use FaceTime. Right. See, right. I mean that that that's the argument the Justice Department has. I don't know if they're wrong, but uh, you know, when it comes to technology, the Justice Department is usually wrong all the time, but you know, whatever. So anyway, here we are. It's Tuesday it's Thursday night. It's, um, uh, you know what I'm mad about? It's the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the basketball thing. What is it, the final five? March four, Madness. March Madness. What, what, and then yeah. they used to call it the final four or something. Mm -hmm. And now it comes it's when it gets down to the last four teams. Oh, right now it's March Madness, but then it's what is the it? It's the final 68 right now. It's the final yeah. 68. <laughs> well, anyway. what pisses, And Oregon won today, so that's good. But what pisses me off about it is it's on CBS, right? CBS has the main rights to it. And um, um, so consequently, all the CBS shows that I might watch, like Young Sheldon and Ghost, I can't watch for the next month because of this fucking goddamn stupid motherfucking <laughs> basketball game. I'm actually with you on that, Alex. You know, I mean, I they ought to not televise uh, 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 basketball or or baseball. Hey, listen, if they want to run the you know the final the March Madness, uh, run it on Paramount Plus. Or if you don't want to run it on Paramount Plus, run Young Sheldon and Ghosts on Paramount. It's Plus. actually on HBO Max. 
because I I, I uh, subscribe to that. Oh, too, they got they, they got they got they there. got some of the games, but at this point, when they get down to the final four, the you know the final ten or whatever the I don't know the final bunch of assholes trying to bounce a ball up and down a court. Uh, um, when they get down to those, uh, then uh, they you know it'll be on everything will be on CBS. Yeah. You know they have the rights to it. They pay a pretty penny for it. Mm. But you know there are people out there like myself who really don't give a diddly about yeah. March Madness, and mm -hmm. I'm sick of hearing about it and that everything has to you know supplant March Madness. And don't they realize that those people who don't have March Madness might actually have a fairly decent sized audience from people like myself who don't want to have anything to do with it? You know how many here care about March Madness? Raise your hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Only, like th care. only this Maybe year because she's going last. to college now. Oh, because she's going to college. That's the only reason. Yeah. Now here is uh, what was it? Um, uh, what is it that uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel was talking about? Is it Gonzaga? Yeah. Yeah. A and he says Gonzaga. he doesn't actually believe there is such a school. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you where it is. How can they come up with a name with it? <laughs> yeah, Gonzaga, and they're playing somebody else who you never heard of before. Yeah. And you're going. This is just a myth, right? This is a joke. Yeah, well, it's even funnier today. The ducks beat the cocks. <laughs> I was just waiting for him to say that because it kept saying that, oh, they're going up the court, they're beating the cocks. And I'm going, no, he didn't just say that. <laughs> it's the game cocks, you know, the yeah. South Carolina game cocks. Oh, boy. But the cocks are out now. Name. So. Their cocks are out now. Up. They the must have really are... getting down, getting down to the bottom of the barrel there. Wow. Yeah, you lose once, you're out. Really? Yep. Is that it? Yeah. I, I was eating sushi last night and had it on the widescreen. My brother-in-law was explaining it to me. There's a, a a college from Louisiana I never heard of, and I said, this college seems to be reverse racist. Everybody's black. And my brother-in-law <laughs> says it's a black college. Oh. <laughs> Well, that explains that they actually won by in overtime. But uh, I thought, wow, okay. I yeah. didn't know they still existed, like Morehouse and stuff like that. Oh yeah, well, Morehouse uh, is a black college. No, I know that, yeah. but I had a friend of mine that went there. But that was the only one I ever. And heard I know of. that because I'm a black man. Well, whatever. So you have point zero one of you in there. What? No, 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 no. My name is my real name is as you know, in spite of everything that Howard Stern says about me, I've told you before is Schwarzman. And Schwarzman, translated from the German, is black man. Oh really? Yes. Is that right? Yes. That is correct. Oh, so wow. hey brother, how you doing, huh? Huh? <laughs> Bro. You matter. Okay. Bro. Bro. <laughs> I thought it tra translated into in into Tyrone. No. <laughs> you got to translate it into Tyrone. Yeah, Tyrone is. The, here uh, we go. Yeah, never here mind. we go. Here we go again. Some racism going here. Good yeah. old fashioned American racism. I, I can see it yeah. coming. Yeah. 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 We're really. That's one thing America is superior at is racism. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Number one. Oh, and yep. secondly, uh, uh, ageism and uh, sexism. We're very yeah. good at it. We're, it's our specialty. That's right. And that, don't, let, don't leave out number four, the Republican Party. Yes. We're number one. <laughs> right. Um, now the Republican Party, geez, you know, I feel sorry. What a for, mess. I feel sorry for Republicans. You know, there are Republicans out there who are decent people, who really don't like Trump, don't like what's going on, and, and they're, they're being told they're not even wanted as part of the party. So come on no. over and vote with us, okay? You know. What do they call them, rhinos? Rhino, yeah, yeah they do call them sometimes rhinos. Republicans, Republicans in name people. only. Yeah. 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 You know, and I, 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 don't, I, don't, I think that was a stupid remark on, on Trump's part. Because uh, to say, well, you're no longer okay. part of my party if you're blah 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 blah. Well, no, you know, you want to keep yeah. everybody in the in the, under the tent if you can. I know, yeah. But whatever. Hello, Brian. 
Wow, you watch some of that basketball today? Oh wow. yeah! Oh god, my god! You know, I uh, have, how, how are your brackets going? They're awesome right now. I have one. I have two brackets. One is a little busted, but I got one going good. How about yours? Well, I did sixty-three brackets. <laughs> that way, you know so you'll win. That one, way, right? I'll win yeah. one. <laughs> See, I knew that. I knew well enough to make a joke. Sixty-three brackets. Okay. So. Bop, 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 bop. 68. Oh, it's a six, 68 brackets. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so. But uh, uh, does anybody here do brackets? I used to. Would you like to explain it to me? Well, you just pick whatever team you think is going to win. That's all. Yeah. And then you and you keep going inward till you get to the oh, final yeah, yeah. four. Oh yeah, it goes in and in until. So you have to game. pick them all in advance, right? Well, you just you get points for each as it keeps going down. So if your teams lose, you, you get less points as it goes down. Whoever's yeah. teams are in it keeps going and get the most points. Mm -hmm. Whoever gets the most points wins the pot. Really? Yeah. They're giving away marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, I turned on my phone to see and make sure somebody was calling first, so I didn't have to panic. But and I saw some people, and I said, "Oh, Phil's on tonight on my phone." Oh no! See, on a very small phone, you look like Phil. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Am I getting the Phil tag? Oh, leave the poor guy. You want to know something? That's the most insulting thing we can say to this guy. Well, I was sure just is. saying that. I, Let's. I, I can handle it, boys. I can handle it. Okay, good. So, but let's they stop. both have a New York accent, too. Yeah. I'm a native San Franciscan. Yeah, right. He is. Are you? Yeah. So am I. And I have a New York, I have somewhat of a New York accent. I got it when I it's came here the first time. What? I thought Phil was a native Californian. No, he's, no. From, he's from Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's so, been out there. But so's time. Bernie Sanders. So, uh, you know. And so's, uh, oh, what's his name from Curb Your Enthusiasm? So, oh, Larry, Larry David, Larry David, yeah, that's the reason why he does a very good impression of uh, Bernie Sanders because they have basically the same accent. You know, there are people who are, are very good at language in this country who, if they hear an accent, can tell you where somebody's from and then tell you the neighborhood. Wow, all right. Because, believe it or not, uh, accents change from block to block in, the United, oh. in some places in the United States. Especially and for, where Tony lives. Well, for instance, Brooklyn has a completely different accent than the Bronx, a different accent than Queens. And in Manhattan, I don't think we have any perceivable accent, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, who am I to know? Okay? So, anyway. Well, we have 40 minutes left. What do you want to talk about? Alex, I wanted to ask you last night, you mentioned that uh, sometimes it's arduous for you to have uh, minimal people on board. And I was wondering if it would be advantageous to, is it possible to share this with people on the Internet to get more viewership? Or are you not into getting more? Well, no, we're, we're, we're on YouTube. We're on everything. You know, we're on YouTube, we're on, uh, uh, I, I'm up on, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook, oh. uh, we, we're on everything, you know. Roku, yeah. everything. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. help, it doesn't help. But you know, it, it also it's gotten lower as the years go on. I don't think it's because I've gotten worse or the show's gotten worse, but because there's so many people doing podcasts, they're podcast weary out there. You know, I probably do better to do just one show a week and put all my effort into that, you know, and uh, one at night, maybe the one on Monday, and that's it. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it, I, we, do, we do have this out there everywhere. Plus, I just put a lot of work in on the, uh, on the Roku channel, so you people better go look at the Roku <laughs> channel, okay? Uh, today, I took all the, uh, I had a whole bunch of, each show had its own little square on the pop of the first page, so what I did is I put them all in on one icon, and then when you go in there, you get all the shows. So the, the page looks neater and nicer and everything. And I put up about 30 new videos so far, and there are gonna be more coming. So if you, if you have a chance, go on over to, um, uh, you just go, it's, it's, it's listed as GabNet Live, okay? 
but you can just put in GabNet uh, in, on your Roku, and it will come up. The icon for it will come up, and then you just click on it and go in there, and you can listen to us live on audio. Also get all the videos of about the last five shows of each of the shows. And I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, that, yeah, we, I've yet to be able to put a, a, live, uh, a live feed, however, from YouTube onto it so that when we're live, you can watch the video there. So you'll still have to go over to YouTube. But that's only because YouTube's like Apple and they make everything inoperable with each other. You know, so. That's, then that's my so if, if you have a chance that's my plug oh and by the way be sure to subscribe and push the bell for the notifications smash what? that bell smash that <laughs> bell yeah whatever that means you know so anyway um what was i saying what uh, there was uh, some stuff going on today today uh, you know turn on msnbc which is of course we know the trump channel now because every time I tune it on, they're talking about Donald Trump. They didn't learn their lesson from nineteen from twenty sixteen. No, no, they didn't. So the, every every time I tune over there, and today they were all there. Oh, we're getting closer to him going bankrupt. We're going getting closer to him being bankrupt, and they're saying, oh, he won't go into bankruptcy because that would not sit. He would lose votes if he went into bankruptcy. <laughs> He's at six. <laughs> He's at what? The opposite. He's had six already. If he's yeah. gonna lose votes, he'd have lost them by now. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he had, oh yeah, all the other bankruptcies. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot about Nothing those. New. Yeah, but most people don't know about those. But you know, if they suddenly find out. How do you think people are going to react to Trump if he does file for bankruptcy? How do you think that's going to affect it with his? Acolytes. Do you think they'll still There'll be, be a with... sympathy surge of donations for him? <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Let's help poor Donald. He's okay. being railroaded. Uh, listen, <laughs> folks, if you're, Bill, if, you, if, you're listening, if you're listening to me and you're a Democrat who's going to send him money because he's broke, Phil. okay, just remember this. This is a guy who supposedly had billions and billions of dollars. Yeah, and, much, and much like the My Pillow guy, he's lost every penny of it. Phil. Do you want that kind of person running the finances of your country? Phil. Phil? Well, Are you know. still calling me Phil? No, no not you. No, not you. Alex Phil. No, he's calling me Phil. No, what? Yeah. No, he's no saying I'm Phil's saying you're talking donate. about Phil. He's going to donate. Yeah, he's donating like crazy. We he's about. already donated a bunch, yeah. yeah. Has he donated lately? I thought he said yeah. he donated at one point, but he hasn't lately. He says, you're exactly right. Where, who, where do you say it? No, if you say he says oh. he hasn't donated, I agree. He does say that. Well, but. let's talk to Phil's best friend here, uh, our, yeah. uh, uh, Alan. Alan? I, I haven't heard him say he's donated any money to anybody lately. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, he, he was going to donate some to uh, Arafat, but he's dead, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He, he was. He, he loves talking about stuff that makes no sense. Sometimes, it well, wasn't Arafat. It was somebody else that's not even run for president. I'm waiting and for he, the day. I'm waiting. I'm a little confused. It's okay. I'm waiting for the day. The Phil says, "Hey, listen, I've been all wrong about Trump, and then I'm going to check the weather forecast to see if hell is frozen over." Yeah, no kidding. I was say, don't hold your breath. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, mm -hmm. Well, I don't know how much of him just sticks with that because he doesn't want to be proven wrong or how much of that sticks with him because he doesn't want to ruin his reputation, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just amazing to me that anybody would follow this guy. I mean, you know, go follow Ted Cruz for crying out loud. I know that sounds ugly and horrible, but, geez, at least, you know, there's this... Is he, he Cruz is a more honest person, believe it or not. So know. there's a there's a uh, I don't know what she was. There's some lady that's in the running for vice president, and she had some work done to her teeth. So um, she was talking about know. it on a show and gave a plug to the dental office, and it was in the news today. And now they're looking into her. Uh, did she get free dental work? She's got nice teeth. 
did she get free dental work for this plug on on national news? If she did, that's, and she that's Christy Nome. Thank yeah. you, thank you, South Dakota, South Dakota, yeah. South Dakota. Christy yeah. Nome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's back in it again, huh? Oh, is she running yeah. again? She she's a Republican, right? No, no. She said that somebody said that she's uh, one of the commentators on CNN said that she's one of the people on the short list of uh, yes, you know, those, um, vice yeah. president pick. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, there is a question there. If she did have her teeth fixed and in the process of running for office, she mentioned this dentist, then they and she got it for free, then there's a good chance that she's doing something that's not... Well, they're investigating it. Campaign laws. Yeah. I mean, there were some very yeah. tough campaign laws. Um, yeah. yeah. However, it, you know what gets me is that you, if you raise this money, it's yours. Mm -hmm. And if you suddenly pull out of the race and you still got several million left, <clears throat> it's yours. Now, what most people do is turn it over to their party. That's the right thing to do. But you don't have to do that. And you know that Trump won't do that. I mean, Trump is basically selling cakes and cookies. He's mm -hmm. selling his, uh, his uh, what, his uh, kick-ass, kick-ass kicks, you know. Um, he's selling, uh, I'm surprised he hasn't got jams and jellies. I really am. I'm surprised they don't have a Trump My Pillow, well, the Trump edition. Well, that guy, poor, you know, I, Mike Lindell, you know, I, there's oh, a part a of me. he's the biggest idiot. No, there part, there's part of me that feels sorry for this guy. <laughs> he's great entertainment, I'll tell you. Yeah, but I feel, he is great I feel sorry for him because, and this is, uh, this, because here's a guy who really had a real problem in his life. He was a big drug user, you know, his life was a mess. He stopped doing drugs. He started this My Pillow company. He made a fortune off of it. I mean, it did he's, he's really. He's a convicted great. felon. Yeah. Is he a convicted? Yeah, he's a convicted felon. But I think he admits to all of that. There's no, yeah. there's no, you know. In fact, he's proud of the fact that he was that, and now he's turned his life around. He's wrote a book. But and everything. you want to know this? All the things that happens because people are drug addicts is the reason Mike Lindell is the way he is right now. Exactly. You know. I mean, he didn't come. There's only three brain cells left that are working. Well, no, I, that's not the point. Okay. You know, he transferred the point. his addiction from drugs to Trump. Yeah, to Trump. Yeah, it's, it, and, and uh, really, uh, it's ruined his life. It really has. I mean, I'm, I, can't, I can't believe the guy's in close to bankruptcy right now. To begin okay. with, he's got so many people suing him that, you know, it's ridiculous. And I can't, in a way, I feel sorry for the guy because he's such a moron. He's such an idiot. And he, he had a fairly good life going for him. And he just has completely flushed it down does. the drain. People are still buying my pillow pillows and sheets. And No, they're not buying them like they were, you know. And there was no. a period of time there where even Fox wouldn't take his advertising. And he yep. complained it was because they didn't like his political stance. And that wasn't the reason. The reason was he wasn't paying his goddamn bills. You know, so Learned I mean. Learned from the master, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so I feel he's another sucker of, he's another sucker of Trump. You know, well, before he even got into politics, he had an F minus minus rating on his return policies. Oh, did he really? Oh, oh yeah. Yep. You, you couldn't return you those like pillows. Pillow, you had to keep it he, anyway. Huh? Yeah, he, he, he had a terrible response on his you know if you you know he always said it guaranteed for life and all that crap never did never never held uh, up uh, do you know anybody who ever bought one of those wait call phil i yeah he did bought phil one. buy him he yeah. bought him on my recommendation i sleep on him every night most comfortable pillow i've ever had <laughs> really? I, I mean I, i'm being being totally serious i got i got six brand new ones because they vacuum seal them and when you take them out, you put them in the dryer for 30 minutes and they fluff up. And a lot of other companies have copied what he did. He, take, he took small, medium, and large pieces of memory foam, cut them up, and put them, filled them in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the 800 thread count or whatever pillow. And it works. I mean, there are other companies that are doing it and selling theirs too. 
Hmm, how much leftovers from the, the, it's, it's all the cuts from the other mattresses. It's all leftovers probably. from the mattresses. You know, when they chop off the edges and make the shapes and all that for the oh, mattresses. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably, probably. But that would seem to me if you had that kind of that that memory foam chopped up in there, that it's going to be lumpy. No, know? because it's it's chunks and it's not a one flat. Yeah, no, but you're saying it's chunks, but it's still got to be lumpy. Because those chunks aren't even. You know, when you put feathers in a pillow, feathers are pretty much fold into each other and they're soft and, you know. Sure. You don't like a feather pillow? No. No. Really? I, I stayed at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. They had what, you have no nerve endings? Is that the reason why or something <laughs> like that? You know? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, but, but so you own you own two my pillows or three my pillows or five my pillows. Well, there's three of them on the bed, and I I think I got four more in the closet that are brand new. I actually returned a couple of them because they I couldn't get them to get fluffy again by their and the, and I sent it to them and uh, you know it cost me nine dollars and he sent me two brand new ones. For I thought me. you said their return policy sucked. Oh wow. Well, you know, maybe I got lucky. It must have been a Wednesday <laughs> or something. Who knows? Yeah. I don't yeah, I, I've heard the same thing. What Kevin said, the return policy is horrible, but I thought I'd try it anyhow. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, and now he's selling everything he possibly can off that site. I think leppers, we... sheets, mattresses, mm. all kinds of stuff. potato chips, probably. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So I, I don't know. I feel I, I I know I'm stupid to feel sorry for him, but I just you know. Every now and then, Remember I look at this. Remember when you walked out of the White House with those whatever notes and the news zoomed in on what he was mm -hmm. bringing out? That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like I, when I, Jimmy well, Kimmel put him in the in the game box with the stuffed oh, toys. Well, no, no, in the claw machine. Yeah, the claw. Yeah, the claw. claw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was hilarious. It was across oh, the yeah. street from his theater. But he went along with it. That was pretty good. Of, well, that's you know. another thing I kind of like about him. <laughs> <laughs> that he'll put up with that kind of crap. Well, he didn't realize he was being teased or, or whatever. Used. No, I, Used. look, I don't think... Yeah, he was probably high. No, I don't think... I, I Excuse me, folks. I honestly believe that he he didn't feel he was being used. You know, that he went along with the joke. He knew what the joke was, and he went along with it. So you got to give him some yeah. credit for that, you know. But anyway, I mean, I, I I feel all these people are the, the people that he calls hostages. You know that were arrested and convicted for uh, January six. Really, I feel sorry for them in a way because they're suckers of Donald Trump. In other words, these are all people who have just stood by Donald Trump. Some are going to jail today. Who who yep. went to jail? Uh, um, one of his Navarro. Navarro went yeah. to jail today or yesterday, and and you know these are people who stood by Trump, and Trump doesn't stand by them. You know, otherwise Navarro wouldn't be going to jail right now. You if know? he wins, he will. You can bet he'll pardon every one of these people. Yep. Oh, he said he's going to pardon all these people. You know, and and by the way, those people that went to jail, these so-called hostages, all copped a plea and pled guilty. Yep. That's why they're going to jail, okay? You know, so it's not like an easy thing, right? You know, they're so. all big boys and girls, and they did it. Well, everybody, so be nice. It's their own damn fault. Be nice and be on your Fuck best em. behavior, because guess who's calling here? Fuck Tony. <laughs> hi, hi, hey, Tony. Hi, Tony. I got news for you on Trump. I was listening to you. Yeah. I don't know if you guys heard. I was going to tell you this, Alex. Me and my brother were talking about it. That Truth Social, what he's trying to do, he wants to IPO that Monday or Tuesday. They're trying to stop what he wants to do. Now, listen, what he wants to do, Alex, he wants to IPO that. Then he wants to dump his stock. If he dumps his stock, they're saying it's worth about $40 a share. He can make about $2 billion that day. But company, you know, that's like a pump and dump. They don't want him to do that. He's trying to get around it. He do, if that IPOs, he's going to get a couple million, billion dollars on that. And if you it, know what it costs to do IPO of a company? They said they may do it Monday. He's been trying to do it. Well, he may can't do that that quick. Yes, I'm telling you. They said, it's if you Google it, it's main news. 
They tried to do it Monday or Tuesday on the market. No oh, way. Uh, you know, he's gonna make a couple million. Go through all billion, the- billion. He's gonna oh, dump his billion. stock. No, I understand. But to, to do an IPO costs a lot of money. Yeah, but David Allen, this has been in the works for a while. He's been oh. trying to push this. Okay, okay, hold on a second. Truth Social. Mm-hmm. Truth Social. Al. He's not as stupid as you think, Alex. I'm telling you, this guy. IPO. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, he knows yeah, all the tricks he's... in the book. He's not dumb, Alan. I'm telling you. You think he's dumb? No, I don't, no, I don't, I don't think he's dumb. I've never thought he was dumb. He's street he smart. Dumb. He's street I smart. Do. Yeah, he's street smart, Alex. That's exactly it. A true social windfall likely won't tr- solve Trump's an immediate financial crisis. Former president could reap billions of dollars on paper in the merger of social media company, but he wouldn't be able to cash in for at least six months. Yeah, that, and you know what he's trying to do? He's trying to litigate it where he makes the board, where they let him sell it. That's where it's tied up right now. That's what he's trying to push push across. Yeah, he won't be able to piss off yeah. a lot Alex, of business. he must be guessing. Like, other yeah. companies yeah. have tried that that yeah. hasn't worked so well. There, yeah. there, you are, know, there, are, there are rules, there are rules the and regulations the SEC about this gets stuff. pissed off at that shit. Yeah. Let me tell you, I wouldn't be shocked if it goes through. Well, I maybe it may go through. Wait a minute, hold on a second. percent of the stock, so what, what does that mean? He's going to dump it because he knows it's not worth shit. He can't That's dump right. it. He can't dump no, it No, he's going to try to get around it, Alex. He I'm can't you, get, you can't get around it. You can't dump it for six months. And, well, that's what they, it, yeah, and, and but he's secondly, trying to litigate secondly, it. Secondly, let's say arbitrarily that he maybe mm. owns 60, 70% of the stock yeah. currently or the big company itself. Yeah, I would say about okay. that. Okay, let's say he then gets $2 billion and he wants to dump the stock. Every minute that he's dumping it, that stock oh. price goes down oh, yeah. and down and down. So by the time he gets to the end of it, he really isn't going to make any kind of profit. Well, he's so desperate. No, he's going to, he's, whatever he gets, he's going to grab, though, because he's that desperate. No, I but think. you can't just grab. You're, you're dealing here with some entirely different thing that isn't easy to do. Okay. And you know what the fallout? You? you know what the fallout on Wall Street will be after that? And how many other companies will want to do that shit? Yeah. Well, I'm just telling you, it's so strange things that happened. Strange things happened. I'm, I'm not telling saying you, he won't try. I'm telling you, he can't. I, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's not that he won't try, yeah. but he can't. I, I hope you're right because I don't trust this guy, Alex. I was like, oh, shit. Uh, the Supreme <laughs> Court gave him a special ruling saying he can do it. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, boy, they sure been dragging their feet on He is never going to, he's never going to be able to put, to put so, truth social stock on the line. Which right means now. he won't. Wait a minute. On on uh, the IPO, have to do an IPO fast enough to thwart off that Monday when he's got to have all that hell, money. Who would want to buy it? Well, I wouldn't buy that. You could wipe your ass with that thing. That's right. Good, good, good way to put that, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alex, he's probably so bought and sold. I would love to see his taxes, where he's getting his money from. I don't think oh, he has any money. He, it, it, be, be, no, but he's taking loans out. See, I guarantee you that where it's coming. To. He's broke. He doesn't. He can't get loans anymore. Haven't you heard? Not in the United States. I think it's out of the country. Uh, I, he can't take. He can't take. He can't take money from out of the country. Deutsche Bank turned him down. Everybody. He, but he can't. Yeah, take, he, he, out, I, I don't. Of, wait, I, I don't believe down. he can. Uh, he can uh, take money from out of the country. Okay, at least for his campaign. So, so you know. part of the problem with it, with uh, these bonding companies or banks yeah. lending them the money, say on Trump Tower, he doesn't own Trump Tower outright, probably. No. So there's a bank involved that owns part of it. There may be partners involved. There may be other things involved. I, th- so I think he actually. It's a oh, I think he actually. Situation for I, the bonding company. I think he owns Trump Tower. Hmm. I really I think that that is. I use that as an example. I gotta see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think he owns Trump Tower. He I, also I, owns, I think, the place down on Wall Street, because these are all the places that mm. Letitia Dr- James is thinking of trying to buy okay. and sell. Yeah. Good. I hope they start. Supposed to start Monday. Yeah, Monday she's starting. Yeah. News. Fingers crossed. Uh, well, if he doesn't, if he doesn't make the deadline, you know, it's uh, he can't appeal it either. If he doesn't make the deadline. So if he can't come up with that money, he cannot appeal it. And so therefore he's out the money anyway. He doesn't have it. Well, then we'll start. I feel taking... sorry for the Secret Service having to protect him in Skid Row. 
where he's living. He's, where such, he's, a, living. he's such a gangster, really. Well, you know, I, I mean, didn't mean it in a gangster. I meant he'll be. No, I don't mean like that. I think he's so slippery, this guy. Uh, you know, he's never been the billionaire that he said he is. His money no. has all been fake bucks. I yeah. wonder how much he was actually worth at the peak of his career, Alex. What do you think? I have no had? idea. He, he might have been worth up to three billion dollars, but again, a lot of that is uh, is in property. It's so what's not, liquid? It's, I it's not that, what. I wonder what's liquid. He can't write a check for four hundred million. We know that already. No, we know that five hundred yeah. million. Yeah. Yeah. No, he can't write a check for that. No, uh, but Taylor Swift could, though. They said. <laughs> well, what's interesting is uh, his. Uh, yeah, I mentioned this last night that his yeah. uh, his son-in-law, uh, he's got Kushner, money. That guy. Kushner, Kushner probably oh, yeah. could give him the money, and he's not even offering to give him. Yeah, the money. that was what I heard you say. Yeah. So yeah, I don't did, did Kushner's father do jail time? I think he did. Yes, right? absolutely. Yeah. Yes, he did. Hello, Charlene. How are you? Oh, hi, Alex. Yes. You know, out here in Jersey, I was watching the news. Turn the your turn news. your phone sideways. Turn oh, your phone sideways. Okay, I was going to ask see. you if I'm positioned. Wait a minute. Oh, right wait a minute. It doesn't. <laughs> it, now you're just sideways. Did oh. you turn it back the oh, way it was? Back. Okay. Okay. Sorry. You've got no, but uh, they're, they're saying that he might have to sell the New Jersey golf course. What's that thing called? Mo not more. Well, no, is is this, but I I I Ivana is buried there. She's on the ninth hole. Aren't she? She's on the ninth <laughs> hole. She's the tenth hole on the ninth hole. Right. So anyway, uh, she uh, <laughs> uh, she's on the ninth <laughs> hole. I wonder if they get I'm that. If they get that, uh, see, they can get they can attach stuff that's his in other states. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because New York is suing him, right? Or yeah. Something like New York that. is suing him, but they can go after if he's got a golf course in California. York. He can, uh, you know, they... He, no, they, Alex he, is saying, Alex, they maybe could do it, even though it's Jersey, they could take it. Oh, yeah, season. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope they do, because I don't want that fucking golf course in New Jersey. It makes me mad. <laughs> well, you know, if they if he sells it, is he going to have to move Ivanka? Or Ivana? I guess you got to zoom in the body, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, take her she's out of there. Black box. Well, she's ashes, isn't she? They cremated her, no, right? No, no, no. She's uh, oh, she's physically buried. I think there? she's physically buried there. Yeah. Oh, she's lying on a bed of Secret Service uh, paperwork. Yeah, I thought it was. That's really sick. The only the only place you could put her was the golf course. Yeah, that's what he did. That's what he did. Yeah, like a cemetery, like a normal person. Right? Yeah, you need to have a family. Uh, uh, is it? Is it? Uh, uh, somebody was joking here, but was it the ninth hole? I thought you said that in the bridge. I can Google. Let me Google that for you. Because now I'm curious. To be on my Where mind, is Ivana Trump buried? Where is it? Not <laughs> Ivana. I wonder if she would tell it to you. Well, didn't she, didn't she fall down the stairs, stairs and she broke she her neck on the spiral staircase or yeah. something? Yeah. That was wild. I think she was she trying to kill. Down. I think she was trying to kill herself because she was, you know, right. had the name Trump. Uh, I, I interviewed her years ago by phone in San Francisco. And she was a very nice lady. Very nice mm -hmm. lady. You know. I, I kinda, He's the one that sucks, right? Well, of course he sucks. You know. He okay. took it as long as she could. Yeah. Yeah. And bailed, yeah. yeah. She bailed. Well, how old was she, women? Excuse me. If, how old was if, Echo? How old was Ivana Trump when she died? I don't know, but it says so, she, she's buried at the Trump. 72 National. years old. Can you shut up while I'm listening to Echo? Cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest, she died of. So I think she yeah. had the heart attack and fell down the stairs. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And broke her neck on the that's way down. She's only 72 years old. That's young. That's young. I know. That's what I was thinking. That's not Well, that that's what somebody older. my age always says. He's, she was so young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> try and tell somebody 18 that's young. You know. So. <laughs> uh, you yeah. know. Am I am I he right, John? Born, am I right, John? Married. The older you get, the younger yeah. they seem to get when they're dying, even if they're like seventy-two. Yeah, very young, right, Charlie? Right, yeah. good. Charlie says very young. Uh, anyway, so um, so we got. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have? Let's see here. Uh, there's nothing else that I was hearing about in the news that was. Alex. They caught the guy, by the way, they, they he caught the guy oh, who escaped from the jail who had tattoos all over his face. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he, he was trying to hide, but there wasn't a hat big enough to cover his face. I don't know. You know, I mean, if you're going to be a, a, a bad guy, 
If you're going to rob banks or you're going to do yeah. whatever you're going to do, don't get a tattoo on your face. I mean, that's just giving yourself away. That, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. Look for the guy who has, uh, you know, a, his whole face is tattooed. Okay, we got has him. Hate across the forehead. <laughs> hate across the forehead, yeah. That's our guy. <laughs> but they caught him. And the guy. How'd you know it was me? Wild guess. <laughs> They think they may have killed a couple of people while they were out. Oh, really? Yeah, I oh, mean, what, well, you have a death wish? What is this? You know? There was two of them, Alex, right? Two of them or something? Yeah, there were, well, there, no, well, there was the guy, he was in jail. And there was another guy who had been in jail with him, but they were part of, like, a prison gang or something like that. So this guy went back and, and literally got him out, you know, by shooting oh, really? up some cops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. And then they took Ooh. off. They and they actually got 100, 150 miles away, which yeah, is man. unusual because most of these idiots just stay in in the neighborhood, you know. But the, at least these guys got away, but they got caught anyway, you know. Because they, of course, they had these. Ta both of them had tattoos all over their face. See that's yeah, you know. So they probably rue the day they got those. No, we shouldn't have got them breaking out. We should never got these tattoos. We should have got them after we got out of jail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. After, you know, no thought. They don't plan well. They, you're not planning well. <laughs> so, Brian, how's everything over there at your at your domicile? <laughs> he sounds like he's can't is, hear you. Is Adrian, oh, oh, is Adrian okay? Is she doing uh, fine? Yeah, yeah, she's doing good. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Everything is fine. I know. I just, just want to uh, know. No, just uh, real busy at work. Uh, yeah, so real busy at work. You just, drive how many miles every day to work? I think it's 100. It's 100 miles or 200 what? miles? Two, no, 200 right. miles uh, round trip. I think so. What? Was it 97 miles? That's some miles commute. You know, That's it's, crazy. Uh, hour and a half. Hour and a half there, hour and a half back. Today was a little bit longer because I, I had a long day. So, Because I used to do that in uh, Sacramento when I was doing play TV. I used to drive up there, but I did most of the shows from San Francisco, so I didn't have to be there more than a couple of days a week. But mm -hmm. that was like a 90-mile 90, 90 round trip, you know, tri trip down 90 miles back. And yes, that's what mine must be, 97 miles. Down wow. There. I, and so how do you spend your time... On that trip, uh, I listen to this show if I miss the show, mm -hmm. and then uh, I have podcasts, a bunch of podcasts I listen to. Yeah, yeah. Do you do yeah. any books on tape I, type sports stuff? Sports talk, sports talk. When after the 49ers lose, so I can actually oh, yeah. listen to it, not to listen to the 49ers again. And you like to listen to it when the Cowboys lose? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but they don't talk about the Cowboys. They don't talk about the Cowboys. <laughs> the fire is there down there, Charlie. Well, nobody, yeah, so nobody talks about talk the Cowboys. So what? I'm, I'm sort of used to the drive now, so it's 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 okay in the morning, you know, and I, they, they take very good care of me. At the Why didn't you move closer to where you work? <laughs> no, because we have, a, we have a factory in Sunnyvale that I worked for with for like 20 years, right? I've been there 20 years. And then we we have this new factory in Lodi, and we're bringing all the machines up to Lodi now. So, so I mean, Google, Google bought our land. That's why Google buys everything. They have their own real estate group, and all they do is buy land. Mm. So in Silicon Valley, they bought all of this land and just keep buying, 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 and they bought all of our land where we were. So they own like most of Silicon Valley. Is that what's happening? Google does. Yes. Yeah. Why do they want? They don't need that much for wow. their companies, yeah. do they? It, 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 it's a comp it's a division in Google, and they make a lot of money with it. So, oh, so they they're actually investing in real estate as a business. Yeah. So before COVID, down there's one freeway two thirty seven. They get buying all the way down past us. They bought our land because we we didn't own the land at that time. We weren't bought out by a big company yet. So, um, and they built a huge buildings. You know the Google Cloud building, and it's all their cloud. People that work there and and uh, yeah, some of them just, don't they, have people in them. They're just all yeah. server buildings. Yeah. So and this one building, it was full of people. Then COVID hit and it's been empty. So they stopped building, but they still own all that land. So they bought our land in 2020. Um, so yeah. So we we had a plan B, and that was plan B. Since we had land up in Lodi with our plastic mold injection company there, we decided to have one campus. So that's what we. we 
we're bringing everything up there. So that's what I'm in charge wow. of right now. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know that Google was buying that much land up. Yeah. Right, sir. When you think about the cloud, the cloud is not the cloud. The cloud is a building full of servers. Oh, yeah. No, that I know. Yeah. yeah. So that's what they're doing all over the place. These buildings that were office buildings are becoming clouds. Just giant servers. Yeah, just giant server buildings. They just got computer servers all through the buildings, and they cool them with nitrogen or whatever they can do to keep them cool. Yeah. And they got three or four people walking around there watching them, make sure nobody gets in there to sabotage them. And wow, that's it. Yeah. And that's what a lot of the buildings around there have. I know a lot of Intel buildings that were there were turned into server buildings. I mean, Amazon, the I company know. company I used to work for in Pennsylvania turned... They had a huge campus out in Allentown, and eighty percent of the building out the buildings out there turned into server buildings. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, uh, Go uh, Amazon has a, a, a server business going too. Amazon sure. Web Services, which I yeah. actually am uh, belong to. AWS, yeah. That's how I feed stuff to my. Uh, don't feed stuff to it. It just holds the data for my. Uh, uh, right. for my uh, Roku channel. But the thing is that it, I have so little um, data uh, that, it ne that I need to put up there that they don't charge me anything. Uh, below a certain amount, they don't charge you for the use of their, uh, of their AWS. So, and I've been with AWS now for, well, ever since I've had a Roku channel. So, hmm. you know. Um, but uh, no servers up in Novato, right? I just checked when Brian was talking. It's 84 miles from Novato. An what, hour and uh, 45 what's it, minutes. What's 84 miles? Uh, Lodi, California. Lodi, Lodi. okay. Mm -hmm. I was kind of curious where it is. It's, it's got to be east of San Jose, yeah? Yeah, it's oh, south yeah, of no, Sacramento. It, it's about yeah, 20 between, miles, 20 yeah, minutes south Valley. of Sacramento. Oh, really? Between, south of Sacramento? I didn't realize between that. Yeah, it's halfway Sacramento. between. Yeah. Yes, but oh, an hour. Oh yeah, because when I went up to uh, when I went up to uh, um, Sacramento, I used to take Highway. What was it? What's the ninety nine or five? Five, five and ninety five oh, or eighty? No, I well, used it was to drive that across and then ninety nine and five. The, the one that goes straight up from San Francisco it doesn't go out to Stockton. Doesn't go that's out 80. to yeah. That's eighty. That's eighty. 80. 80. Yeah, I used to take eighty all the time. Yes, um, that was my route for probably twenty years, three days a week. Really? What, 80? 80 out through Sacramento, Folsom, then down through Lodi, Stockton, Modesto, and then back through Tracy and over the hill. Hmm. Three days hey, a Alex, week. Did, did you remember Dr. Don Rose? Yes. Yes. He used to call too. Sacramento Sacra Tomato. Yeah, Sacra Tomato, yeah. right. Yep. KFRC. I, I, yep. didn't, I didn't really know Don. I, I think I met him on one occasion. Uh, but I never knew, really knew Don. He was yeah. very popular here. Morning show hosts never talk to each other. Uh, yeah, they were too tired. No, we're too, we're actually too competitive. Yeah. And, and we really? and secondly, people always used to say to me, "Gee, have you ever heard?" Uh, they were amazed when I tell them I never heard Howard Stern show. They go, "You never heard Howard Stern show?" And I said, "No. How could I? I was working when he was on." Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you know. Just I like, was listening to you when he was on. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing Howard doesn't remember is that, that CBS had to buy out the station I was on in order to get me out of the market so they could put Howard into it. Because he had been so working you know, out of I quit listening. Because he'd been working so out there. of San Jose and nobody was listening to him. So Yep. yep. We were too oh, sophisticated. Well. He was I don't know. I don't want to say anything bad because Tony's on the line. Well, no, the, the, no the, the, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the trouble. The trouble with Howard was he. Uh, 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 you were bringing it up. San Francisco was a little too sophisticated for his act. Yeah, you know. So. Now it's gotten pretty stupid, so it doesn't really matter. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. He settled down too. So, Charlene, what have you been up to? Anything in particular? Oh, oh, Alex. I'm trying to tell you, give me advice because Monday they're going to do my eyelids. I have a blocked tear duct, and while I'm in there, I have Medicare, and they're going to pay for the eye, you know, the eye thing. The eye, the, but, 
You mean the? Uh, Can they get away with charging me two thousand dollars out of pocket, or they'll stitch it up funny? Because that's what the girl told me. She's very young. I said that's not a good way to explain to a patient. Like I said, what? So like, if I don't pay the extra two thousand, it's gonna look like she said it's gonna look pretty. Or so, I said I had to tell her, is it gonna look pretty because I'm paying out of pocket? Like, isn't that a sick thing? Like, if I don't pay. Well, I'm here's how you're gonna look. <laughs> I mean, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yours is good, Alex. Well, they no, did a good job on you. Yeah, they did. They did a, they good, did a job. good job on mine, but you know, and it, I'll be able to see better, right? Yeah, yeah. The tear ducts. Oh. Well, I had a doctor who was going to do something about my tear ducts, and I just said, eh, "Who cares?" You know. But and and uh, I would have never had this done if it hadn't been that it was impeding my vision. Because what happens is your lid goes down over your half of your your cornea or whatever. And so you're not getting full vision. And so they have to do a lift because the eyelids have a tendency to droop. And they do a lift on it. It doesn't really improve your look. Although in my, my eyes, I think you guys all said I looked different after it was through. No, yeah. it looked much better, Alex. Yeah, yeah. After that. But I didn't do it, I didn't do it for any cosmetic reasons. And, right. it's, a, and it's a medical thing. So really you're covered by Medicare, uh, your insurance company, if you carry enough secondary insurance. You may have to pay two thousand because do you have secondary insurance? Do you have? Are you yeah, Medicare? I have some, are you Medicare? Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm a newbie. Yeah, yeah. I, I still have to learn the ropes. But, yeah, you know, but you no, should but make you know, sure that twenty. I had to sign up. That twenty percent mm-hmm. pay mm-hmm. decent amount of money to get it covered. Don't this advantage crap is really not a good idea. You know. Yeah, I never like, touched that. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it's going to cost, but you know, it's worth it because mm-hmm. right now we have. Um, we're going to keep it. Her bosses were taking care of it, but that's through at the at the beginning of uh, April. Uh, but they were paying for everything, and we had the top line, so we never paid anything at a doctor. We'd leave is a doctor's out, office. Outpatient surgery. What? Is it Ooh, me? Outpatient surgery. Yeah. Well, I have to go to the surgical center. I'm not going to be in and out, you know. But I have to go under. Our patient, she leaves the same day. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So with my with my with my Advantage plan, I pay one hundred ninety nine one hundred ninety nine dollars for any surgery in an outpatient setting. Yeah. Well, in my case, I I don't pay anything. Well, you got better insurance than I do. Yeah. Yeah, and I intend to keep it especially with all that's been happening with me since I seem to be a cancer mill uh you know I'm I'm going to I'm going to make sure that I that I'm completely covered for just about everything um, yeah I ordered from you Alex and uh, Phil I want I figured I was late to the party let me get there early <laughs> yeah you got the early cancer I got the early one <laughs> let's go <laughs> it's just you know my age you know you get all these things and um something's gonna go wrong and none of yeah. the cancers that I've gotten were ones that would kill me so you know this is one I'm gonna die with not from as they put it you know because Alex yeah oh sorry hmm. I just wanted to ask um huh. Brian does he have to fill his gas tank up or something on that drive a couple of times or something? No, he has. A, it's an electric. <laughs> oh, it's electric. All right. No, no. I no, no. He has, no, I he has a Tesla. My, no, I fill up my tank and I get to there and back and then there and back and I got to fill it up again. Yeah, and I, and I asked him how much does it cost. He says I don't know. This company pays for it. So the company pays. Oh wow. That's that's well, that's how, why that's how spoiled then, he is. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the theme. Sorry. I'm gonna play the theme yeah, you here. Gotta go. Because we got to go because there's a show coming on after us, and it happens to be Amy Manuel, and uh, she uh, does a pretty good little show. I know that uh, uh, Charlie will be there, and yep. Alan will be there. So, anyway. You asked me not to mention Trump's name. You brought him up 29 times tonight. <laughs> Somebody's well, bored Can tonight. I just say something? And I mean, this. take this in just the best possible way. Mm-hmm. Blow me. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Alvin. Is it Alvin? Thank you, Alvin, yeah. for being Jim with Alvin. us tonight, <laughs> Alvin. <laughs> yes, Charlie. Thank you for being with us. And uh, <clears throat> hey, we are, we have a new guy here. He's been calling a lot, and we should give him credit for that. John Ewing. Good to hear from you, John. You yeah, play John, that, Bring some friends. You play that guitar yeah, in that's back what of I'd you. Like to do. You play the guitar in back of you. Or is that just dec- I do. oh it, oh I thought it looked like it was just decoration. Uh, 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 Kevin, thank you, thank you to Brian, 
Thank you to our good friend uh, Tony. Uh, and uh, thanks to Charlene, who has mm -hmm. called us tonight as well. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye back. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we'll have another one tomorrow night. Meanwhile, Amy Manuel is next with The Intersection. She'll be having a citizen panel, and that will get together on uh, Skype at GabNet Live. Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Night, everybody.